Now on SUTV News, a communication class is getting big time attention. North Dakota State University hosted a concert. And in sports, a look back as the semester ends. This is SUTV News, and it starts now. Welcome to SUTV News. I'm Adam Kempenick. And I'm Allie Weary. NDSU students and faculty are mourning the loss of one of their own. Cole Gustafson, the chair of Agri Business and Applied Economics at NDSU, was killed in an accident on his family farm this past weekend. Gustafson was the first bioenergy economist at NDSU and was known statewide as an expert in his field. He is survived by his wife and three children. North Dakota State University officially has a new student body of president and vice president. The inauguration of President Luke Berdur and Vice President Jace Beeler took place on Sunday in the Memorial Union. The duo's platform was LEAD, standing for Learn, Engage, Advocate, and Develop. Luke and Jace plan to get to work right away. We're going to start planning for Bison 101. Um, that's a program that we're really excited about that we're hoping to launch right away in the fall. And so, you know, building curriculum for that and seeing what it's going to actually shape up and look like. Um, a lot of work needs to be done on the Aquatic Center vote um, as far as preparing that, looking at designs, looking at costs, all those different things so that right away in the fall we can take that vote. Um, I guess those would be the two big ones, but really all the different platform points. The two will be meeting with administration within the next two weeks. For more, for more information on their future plans, go to www.luke-jace.com. The end of the school year has marked the end of another term for student body president and vice president. Luke Bruder and Jace Beeler have replaced Cam Knutson and Keenan Huff. Running on the VIBE platform of vision, involvement, bison pride, and experience, Knutson and Huff were able to implement several different initiatives throughout campus. These included increasing graduate student health insurance, the bison statue, the president's panel, and improving areas in the library. Knowing that when our year ends, you know, we started last spring, it was knowing that when our year ends, uh, we don't want to look back with any regrets. We want to make sure we give all the effort uh, we possibly could, and I think you know, being here now, with the year over and concluding the year, um, certainly we look back with 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 no regrets and knowing who we're leaving it to, know, knowing that we're leaving it in such uh, great hands, um, that um, the tradition of, of student government will carry on um, through what we did, through what past people have done, and um, and that the Luke and Jace will take over and do better than what we did this year. A group of NDSU communication students have been hard at work over the last few months. Dr. Elizabeth Crawford and Dr. Ross Collins guided their students to success through a project in COM450, a magazine design and production class. The class as a whole produced a 50-page magazine focusing on biofuels in the North Dakota and the other regions. The students were awarded with a first place title at the North Dakota Professional Communicators Banquet. They received high praise for their in-depth research and writing. One person said, you know, I work in uh, business publications uh, for professional business world for, I don't know, 10 years, and he said the article's here just as good as anything we publish. And for students, that's really a good comment because, you know, um, students are not yet professionals, and so working at a professional standard is um, asking a lot of them, and uh, I think they delivered. Fuel Magazine can be accessed in PDF form online at the link below. It is absolutely phenomenal to see this group of people who work so hard get a, get a first place award, you know? Yeah, that's absolutely amazing. Um, it's something that they can definitely use for a resume and stuff when they you know, are going out in the job, in the job market. Uh, coming up, students get a chance to rock out some visiting and local bands. We'll show you that right after this. on time. I don't have to use my car, waste gas, or waste time finding a parking spot. I'm at bus because their hybrid buses not only help our community and our state, but they're also helping our world. I'm at bus not only to get around campus, but to get around the Fargo community. The 25 different routes get me anywhere I need to be. There are many reasons of Matt bus. Come find yours. Join the herd. Be Matt bus strong.
Jimmy John's, America's favorite sandwich. Delivery guys. Steps up, throws deep. Holloway is there at the five. Not at the two. Takes down the horizon. SUTV News is being brought to you by Stop and Go. Stop and Go. We're always there. Welcome back. Several national bands took center stage at a recent concert held at NDSU. The annual NDSU Band Day took place last week at the Memorial Union and featured many bands from around the nation. Scott Skank Redemption, winners of the 2012 Battle of the Bands at the Fargo Dome, opened the show. The event was forced from its original location on the east patio of the Union to the Memorial Union Ballroom due to rain. Even with the location change, the show lasted until 11.30 at night and drew over 100 audience members. The distracting trend is sweeping college campuses across the country. A new study is investigating why college students may not be getting the most out of their education. SUTV's Danny Genegas has more on the story. It's a college instructor's worst nightmare. A well-prepared lecture going unheard by distracted students. I, you know, I work very hard to prepare my lectures to find um, clips so that it's interesting for them. And then when they text, you know, it, it is it is disrespectful. It makes me have kind of a sour taste in my mouth towards that student. A study by the University of Pittsburgh Bradford found that students who frequently text during class risk poor learning outcomes. The whole learning process is a two-way street. It's not just me conveying information and you learning. Texting was found to divert students from their main focus, causing them to retain less information. Although the study found that texting in class greatly harms their ability to learn class material, some students would disagree. Research also found that college students greatly overestimate their ability to multitask. I feel like growing up uh, in this generation, you're, you're so used to so many things coming at you at the same time. You are able to listen to the key points of what the teacher says, as well as pay attention to the key points of your text message. I have texts in class before, and I can take notes at the same time. I don't get as much out of it, but I know some people are good at it. So I think it's all a matter of personal preference. Does that come into play when we look at healthcare? I'm paying for the credits. So, I mean, if I don't want to pay attention, it doesn't hurt the teacher at all. It hurts me more. Although banning texting in class can be effective, some students and teachers agree making lectures more interactive is the key to solving the problem. This is Danny Genegas reporting, SUTV News. The study will be published in the National Communication Association Journal, Communication Education. As for NDSU's policy on mobile phones, there is currently no official ban on texting during class. Well, graduation time in the spring is always a joyous occasion for graduates and their families. However, graduating seniors may be more concerned with what comes after the cap and gown. SUTV's Caitlin Dozal explains the current job outlook for graduating seniors. A recent study conducted by the National Association of Colleges and Employers expects that employers will hire 10% more college graduates from the 2012 class. A person needs to have a focus. Mm -hmm. They have to understand what the focus is and understand the skills and the specific skills that are going to be needed for any particular job that they're going to apply for. Jill states that they have seen far more students on a national and local basis looking to a career center for helping them understand how to get employed after graduation. The career center actually gives a lot of opportunities to not only seniors but also other students and there's a lot of companies that actually do their interviews here at NDSU. So the Career Center is actually a vital importance to that. According to Jill, college students can make themselves more marketable in this competitive market through their written documents like resumes and their verbal conversations during the interview. You know, I, I don't, I just think that if people take initiative and go out for after what they want to get, 
then they're per they're perfectly capable of doing that. And so it just takes some courage to go and apply and do it. They don't have to have their hands held. They can just go do it. The Research Institute at Michigan State University predicts an improved job outlook for graduates who have degrees in accounting, public relations, computer science, and nursing. Those graduates are probably going to have a little bit easier time because they're so focused mm -hmm. in what the type of work they want. Those people are going to have more success in this soft, challenging jo job market for college graduates. According to statistics, the job outlook for college graduates seems to be looking more positive through each passing year. Graduates who want to be more prepared for what comes after graduation can get ahead and start early with the job process. This is Caitlin Dozel reporting for SUTV News. And the SU seniors can visit the Career Center located in Ceres Hall to better prepare themselves for their transition into the workforce. Students can visit the Career Center Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. Well, personally, after graduating, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it's going to be easy to look for another job, especially with all the finals, right? It seems like a lot of extra stress. Yeah, well, you're lucky. You still have a few years that you don't, you know, have to worry about looking just yet. I, on the other hand, better start looking now because I graduate in, a, in about a year, so it's going to be tough. The new exhibit recalls an exciting period in North Dakota history. We'll take a look after we show you this week's campus calendar. Let's face it, presentations are an inescapable part of any student's college career. And no matter how hard we try to make our PowerPoints fun and engaging, they never seem to captivate our audience. But no more. Introducing Prezi, a website with incredibly simple tools that give you the ability to create dynamic, animated presentations for free. It will breathe new life into any presentation you need to make. So let's talk tech. To get started using Prezi, visit their homepage and click on Sign Up. Students can sign up for the Edu Enjoy account by using their NDSU email as their username and listing NDSU as their university. With the Edu Enjoy account, you'll receive 500 megabytes of storage space on the Prezi website and are able to keep your content private. You can even use your own logo instead of the Prezi watermark. Once you set up your account, return to the Prezi homepage and click the Learn tab. This page will give you some easy pointers to help you get up and running creating your own Prezi's. You can even upload existing PowerPoint or Keynote presentations and spice them up in Prezi. After you have experimented with the basic features of Prezi, the Explore tab on the Prezi homepage is a great place to gain inspiration for your own project and gain a greater understanding of the Prezi interface. So use Prezi on your next presentation and impress your classmates and professors. It's easy to use and totally free. Sign up today and start exploring. Summer is on its way, and that means the prospect of severe weather is increasing. Ryan Borstelman is joining us from outside the NDSU campus, where, though Severe Weather Awareness Week is here, the weather is looking great. Ryan? Well, thank you, Adam. As you can see behind me here, the weather is looking absolutely beautiful this evening. However, it is North Dakota Severe Weather Awareness Week. Now, this means the National Weather Service is aiming to inform people about some of the myths and safety tips beyond thunderstorms, lightning, tornadoes, as well as floods. The warm summer months in North Dakota often bring thunderstorms and severe weather. And when it comes to severe weather, warmth is the key. Hot and humid is the key word. Uh, it only happens in the summertime. The reason why hot and humid weather contributes into forming thunderstorm is uh, the temperature 
uh, when the sun sends its, uh, the heat to the ground, it only um, is warm enough to produce thermals to rise or, or push the uh, air upward. And, and thunderstorm utilizes the upward motions. But a common myth about thunderstorms is that thunder does not necessarily equal lightning. Well, a thunderstorm um, deals with the, uh, the wind speeds and uh, thunder and the lightning. If the lightning is there, a thunder has to be there too, uh, which is the sound of a rapid expanding of the air because of that lightning. It's so hot, uh, its temperature is actually hotter than the sun. What tips does Dr. Q's offer to those who find themselves stuck in a storm? There is no safe place in the outdoors. This is number one. But if you have no choice and you're outside and you left already before you looked at the, uh, the forecast, um, another secondary best place is stay in the car. Beyond all of the science and advice, most people have a strong opinion about thunderstorms. I don't like thunderstorms because they keep me up at night and they're scary and loud. They're really cool. They're uh, exciting and adventurous and the possibilities are endless. You don't know what's going to happen, and they're, I don't know, just fun to watch. Well, love them or hate them, thunderstorms are something we all need to be very aware of in these warm summer months. Severe Weather Awareness Week runs through May 5th. For more information, head over to the National Weather Service website at www.weather.gov. Back to you guys. Well, it all started in April of 1951. 60 years have passed, and the discovery of oil in northwestern North Dakota is being celebrated through the Memorial Union Gallery Art Exhibit. Faces of the Oil Patch is the newest addition to the gallery. Photographer Wayne Gudmundson looks at how the oil affects citizens in various parts of North Dakota. The exhibit is made up of 94 pictures featuring both people in favor of the oil and people who feel as though it has negatively impacted their lives. The exhibit officially opens next week with an appearance by the photographer himself. It will run through the beginning of June. Well, as we approach the final days of this school year, Many students at NDSU are hurry, hurrying to finalize their plans for this summer. This week's Sidebox Stampede set out to see exactly what students have planned for the next few months away from school. Um, I'm just going to be working all summer and hanging out with family as much as I can. Um, I'm just planning on going home and working for my dad, doing construction work and all that fun stuff, going out to the lake every once in a while on the weekends. My plans for summer vacation are to get a real job and get a real life like a real person. And that's about it. My plans this summer are to go home to my hometown, Mandan, North Dakota, and hopefully do some camping, camping along the way. I'm gonna be staying in Fargo this summer, working my little tail off and trying to have some fun along the way, going to concerts and all that good stuff. Um, well this summer, Going home to Rugby, North Dakota, I guess, to work in my parents' 1940s soda fountain. Eat sandwiches, serve ice cream, kind of thing. My plans for summer vacation are uh, living in my fraternity house, Tau Cap Epsilon, and working all summer, uh, making a trip to Colorado Springs for a leadership academy in August. Well, summer vacation starts for me right after this show. I don't know what your plans are. Well, you know, I do have a final next week Thursday, so I'm going to have to hold out a little bit longer than you do. Ooh. Joining us now is Jake Cheetah. What are your plans for this summer vacation? Well, I also am done next Thursday after my last final, and I'm, uh, I'm going to stick around in Fargo for a while and then go off to my summer job. That sounds like a fantastic plan. Well, coming up next on SU TV News, after the initial draft, North Dakota State University We'll take a look at Bison Baseball. This and more when we return with SUTV Sports. With MapBus being the easiest, greenest, and most efficient way to get around North Dakota State University, there are tons of reasons to MapBus. I MapBus to get to class on time. I don't have to use my car, waste gas, or waste time finding a parking spot. I MapBus because their hybrid buses not only help our community and our state, but they're also helping our world. I map bus not only to get around campus, but to get around the Fargo community. The 25 different routes get me anywhere I need to be. There are many reasons to map bus. Come find yours. Join the herd. Be map bus strong.
seven NDSU students in a documentary class set out to find and record intriguing stories. Hello, I'm Ali Weary. Join me next week for Working Title, a COM 348 production. Three documentaries take an inside look at a nonprofit radio station, a secluded archive facility, and a rivalry that wants to find a state. Join me May 3rd at 8 o'clock p.m. on SUTV Channel 84. There's always something happening on the NDSU campus. Catch it all on SUTV News on Cable One Channel 14. Brought to you in part by Shields and Stop and Go. SUTV Sports is being brought to you by Shields. Ready for your next big adventure? Welcome to Shields. Welcome back. After the initial NFL draft completed on Saturday, three NDSU Bison were asked to try out for professional teams. First, tight end Matt Veldman was signed as an undrafted free agent to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Then, DJ McNorton received an invite to the Washington Redskins minicamp, and Paul Kornick was asked to join the Jets minicamp. These camps will occur this weekend. Baseball reached 30 wins for only the fourth time in school history. They started off their nine-game homestand on Tuesday against the Beavers of Minot State. Heading out to the Newman Outdoor Field now, bottom of the third, Wes Satzinger hits a single up the middle. Nick Colwell and Zach Wentz will both come around to score and give the Bison a 3 to nothing lead. Later on in the third, Blake Turbach will get a single to third base. Kurt Keneally will take off and score. The Bison go up 4-0 and will win this game 6-1. Anthony Klinsky had five innings pitched, zero earned runs, and is now 2-0. Softball was at work this weekend. They beat SDSU 2-0. They took two of three from SDSU and need to manage one win in the final series against their Summit League opponents. Both baseball and softball will be at home this weekend to take on Southern Utah University. The Bison men's track team broke a 33-year-old school record over the weekend. They were competing in the Drake Relays in Des Moines, Iowa. Earlier on in the day, the 110-meter hurdles team broke the record. Here now we see the distance relays with Moses Hepner starting it off. He will eventually get it around to Travis Fitzke, who will finish off as the distance medley team beats a record that was set in 1979. The track team will next take on the University of North Dakota this weekend in Fargo. NDSU Athletics has released the Road to Frisco DVD. This hour-long documentary on the 2011-2012 National Championship football team was produced by Epic Media of Montana along with the help of two NDSU students. The DVD is on sale at Shields. Here is a look at part of that video.
snap. Drops back and now he's it. Firing deep across the middle. It's picked up by Andy Issue. Now the ball is picked up by Marcus Williams. Running to the 20, 10, 5. Williams is in. We've seen a lot of success with NDSU athletics this year with football, of course, winning the national championship. Volleyball won the Summit League tournament. Soccer made it to the Summit League tournament. Softball and baseball both in first in the Summit League. It's just been a spectacular year. It's very true, and it's great, you know, to have something like this DVD for those of us that didn't get to go to Frisco and see the team in action. No kidding. I think I'm going to get two copies, bring it home to my family, and show them our bison pride that we have, you know? Well, that, that sounds like a great idea. North Dakota State University becomes a tree campus USA. Coming up, we'll tell you what that means and why it's important. Up throws deep. Holloway is there at the five. Not at the two. Good start. Rising. Jimmy Johns? Who ordered Jimmy Johns? Jimmy Johns, America's favorite sandwich delivery guys. There's always something happening on the NDSU campus. Catch it all on SUTV News on Cable One Channel 14. Brought to you in part by Shields and Stop and Go. You know, well, Arbor Day is a great opportunity for the students to go out and plant trees. No kidding. I mean, my family alone, we're going to go out and plant a bunch of trees to uh, celebrate my dad's retirement. Well, that sounds like it's definitely going to be a lot of work. And this is our last newscast of the semester. We would like to thank Cable One for airing SUTV News this school year. We leave you with video of the Red River Zoo and a list of those who have helped with this newscast and make this show possible. Have a great summer.